An Erio's original. Welcome to Web Crawlers, the podcast where we do a deep dive into some of our favorite mysteries. Each week, we will introduce our topic, lay out our research and findings, reveal some conspiracy theories, and conclude with our own hypothesis. I'm Ali Siegel. I am Melissa Stettin. And we are back in action. Thank you guys on the Discord for being so excited and so patient. Um, in the meantime, while I was doing a disastrous job leading the podcast. No, no, no. It was a excited. great job. <laughs> the listeners made it a great job. Melissa, who is our patron this week? <laughs> we have Leanne. <laughs> yes. Welcome. Woo! Welcome, Leanne. Uh, Leanne Rhymes, you're in for the time of your life. Yeah. Let's get into our main episode today. We are going to continue with Scammers Got a Scam January. Hell yeah. Yes. We're actually going to start going with themes for either months or yes. a few weeks at a time, which is an exciting new way we're going to try to construct the podcast this year, see if it works or if it doesn't. Last week in Melissa's episode, she talked about Brittany Dawn, and Melissa mentioned the name of the scammer, Belle Gibson. Today, we're going to get into her and honestly, one of the most insane stories that I've ever heard. <laughs> this woman claimed to cure her malignant cancer holistically, profited off of it, rose to heights that I did not know or expect. Oh, no. But there's a major plot twist. Let's get into it. So many people have suggested this episode, by the way. Like, we've gotten so many over the years. I'm like, okay, I'll do a Bell Gibson episode finally. And then, oh, really? Perfect timing. Perfect timing. You know, it's funny. I didn't recognize her name until I saw the name of her app. And I was like, oh. I feel like I downloaded this. Like, I feel like I had oh, this no. app on my phone. Uh -oh. Um, yeah, crazy stuff. Bell Gibson was born October 8, 1991. That makes her a Libra. Libras are represented by the scales, which is interesting because this bitch is anything but accurate. <laughs> she is. <laughs> We're back. Wait, I think Rip. I think Ripley's a Libra. My daughter, September twenty fourth. It's not a bad sign. Okay, she's just a bad person. <laughs> okay, she is an advocate of pseudoscience and claims to have cured her own terminal cancer through health. Diet and exercise. That's not how it works. But that's not how cancer works. Most importantly, plot twist, <laughs> she never had cancer to begin with. Oh shit. Here we Which go. Is, <laughs> more importantly than you can't cure cancer by eating vegetables, you can't cure cancer if you don't have cancer to begin with. Well, Yes, you can. <laughs> yeah, that, a devil's yeah. advocate. <laughs> if you don't have it, it, it's an easy way to not have it. So uh, let's get into her upbringing, which she claimed was also – she's a pathical, pathological liar. Basically, she's a pathological oh, liar. okay. Uh-oh. So growing up, Gibson – this is the craziest thing that – I watched a 60 Minutes Australia interview with her – and they glazed over this one thing that she said. And I was like, huh? <laughs> okay, so she allegedly has two birth certificates and has changed her name five times. What? Yeah. And then they never go back to that. And Wait, then I tried to find that's more. That's an important thing. Yeah. And I tried to find more about that online and I couldn't find anything. What? And yeah, so I'm like, who is this woman? Like, this is talented Mr. Ripley shit. But, <laughs> okay, so uh, Gibson told a prospective business partner in 2014 that she had several names that she went under. She repeated this in an Australian Women's Weekly article. She said that her mother changed her name five times. Gibson's corporate filings indicate that she is three years younger than she publicly claims to be 
I mean, that's weird to claim to say that you're older. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I sent you a little clip from the 60 Minutes episode. Oh, Will you yes. play it where she talks about her age? Yes. Oh, boy. Here we go. It's so weird. Even when it comes to her age. You're 23, right? Well, actually, how old are you? Um, I've always been raised um, as being currently a 26-year-old. What? How old are you? Well, I live knowing, as I've always known, that I would be 26. Oh, this is crazy. Okay, That's already crazy. Um, I, this is a really Okay, really Rachel Dolezal. <laughs> How old are you? Yeah. I believe that I'm 26. And I have two birth, two birth certificates and I've had what? my name changed four times. The okay, I believe that I'm 29. So Yeah, like... <laughs> She, ident she identifies, I've always believed that one day I would be this age. Like, what is, and the reporter is <laughs> so dragging her to filth through this episode. She's That's like, insane. Belle, this is a really easy question. <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> what's your it, name? It, well, honestly, I've got two different birth certificates. <laughs> like, literally, it's like, she'll hold up the color blue and be like, what color is this, Belle? And she's like, well... There are many shades in the spectrum and people could potentially see it. It's incredible the way this woman That's like amazing. talks circles with not answering questions. <laughs> so Belle has one brother and she uh, was raised by a mother who had MS. At the age of 12, Belle allegedly moved out of her family home mm -hmm. and in with her classmates. She said that her brother has autism and that, uh, she was unable to really be a child because she had to take care of both her mother and her brother and that she had zero toys as a child growing up because no one had time for her. And is this then um, true or is this allegedly? No, no, uh -oh. it's well, <laughs> this is alleged. This is what she says. And it, her okay. mother makes another statement, which I'll read in a second. Oh, boy. then. OK. Yeah. Then her freshman year of high school, she allegedly moves in with a 60 year old man and drops out mm. of high school. They say the 60 year old man is her friend. And I'm like, no, 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 60, no. <laughs> what does this mean? Yeah. She then became active in a skateboarding community, which is like the fun <laughs> one of the weirdest and funniest things about her. She wearing air which walks? Is true. Like that part is true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and if you look at pictures of her, pre well, not presently, but during, um, her health and wellness time. She's blonde and shiny and, you know, what you imagine a wellness influencer to be. Right. During this skateboarding time, she's very MySpacey. Like, she's giving the finger. She's wearing thick rimmed glasses. Her hair's dyed black. It's half shaved. Wow. At one point, she has a mullet. Like, this woman is a real chameleon. Mm -hmm. It's during this skateboarding era, and this is around 2009, 2010, that she starts claiming all of these medical issues. And she informs her friends about these things uh, by like Facebook posts and tweets and like MySpace and whatever. She claims that she had <laughs> three heart operations, <laughs> two cardiac arrests. Oh, no. That she died twice on the table <laughs> and that she had a stroke. <laughs> and this is all within like a year. And these are all separate events. This isn't like this isn't like one event that happened that she's saying wow. occurred. She's like this all happened within a year. And she goes into detail like, you know, she'll tweet like I was on the table and they oh, had to use no. the paddles and I have bruises from where they use the paddles on me. I'll read what her mother recanted. Oh, her mother no. made a statement saying, what a lot of rubbish. Belle never cared for me. Her brother is, excuse me, not autistic. <gasps> and she and she has barely done a minute's housework in her life. <gasps> I've practically worked myself into an early grave to give that girl <laughs> everything she wanted in life. Every time she moved house, I paid for it. Whenever she needed something for her son, I'll get into that in a bit. She has a son, Ollie. Son. I paid for it. Yeah, she has a son who she had when she was 18. 
If she wanted a new computer, I paid for it. Phone bills, clothes, beauty treatments, you name it. And this is how she repays me. She's just a girl who always has ideas above her station. She was never happy with what she had and embarrassed by her family. Her taste just became more and more expensive, and she was living beyond her means, and she was addicted to her computer. She used to fall asleep with it. Always on Facebook, always online. (laughs) But yeah, (laughs) who among us? Who has it? But that world is not real. It's not healthy. So wow, these these weird things are already starting to uh, be disclosed. Crazy. At the age of t- eighteen, she is away. She moves again, gives birth to a son. At in two thousand ten, she says, "quote unquote," I had a stroke at work. I will never forget sitting alone in the doctor's office three weeks later waiting for my test results. He called me in and said, you have malignant brain cancer, Belle. You uh, are dying. You have six weeks, four months tops. Damn. Now, this is what she wrote in the foreword to her book. Oh, she has a book. Yeah. So she has a app and a book, which I'll get into. And they're both called The Wellness Pantry. And so this is what she wrote in the foreword to her book. So, but later to kind of when these things start coming out that she actually didn't have cancer, she backpedals and says she was actually, she never went to a legitimate doctor. What? She revises her story because she tries to blame her thinking she has cancer on someone else now. Her revised story is that in 2009, she met a a man named Mark Johns. In, by the way, in her testimony... Um, in her legal testimony, at first she calls him Dr. Phil, which I'm like, what? you're just pulling <laughs> at names. Phil. Like, it's so obvious that this Dr. person is made up. Uh, Oz? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I met a man named Dr. Oz. No, not that Dr. Oz. It was just a Dr. Oz. Um, so she says she met a man named Mark Johns who said that he was an immunologist and a neurologist, even though no record of this person's, <laughs> no record of this person exists. Yeah. He, she says that he did uh, integrative medicine on her and that he used some sort of German technology on her where it was some electronic machine with all these buttons and sounds uh-huh. and he hooked it up to her and it beeped and buttons <laughs> it beeped lit up three times yeah. and he's like oh you have and a he was cancer. like you have malignant cancer <laughs> yeah i'm like you're you're gonna die oh this isn't um, good <laughs> and it's crazy because technology like this exists um right if you are a fan of like real housewives of beverly hills i guess mm-hmm. denise richard's husband right he her has boyfriend that. i think it's her they got married on the show yeah, he has some weird company yeah, in Malibu that, yeah, he uses all these like newfangled tools and claims to have the cure for cancer. And well, what's crazy is that I think Denise had to get, was it her appendix or she had to get something removed? Yeah. And she went to the hospital. Everyone's like, why didn't you use your husband's technology yes. to remove it? Yeah, like if 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 it works so well, and she like didn't respond to that, but she had like some appendix or some liver something. And he said people were following them because of like the work they're doing. Yeah, he was like the FBI is after me because I know I know about cancer. Here, he there's a here's a quote about Denise from Denise Richards' husband about cancer. Everything you've been taught about how disease process and stuff works is not true. I have to be careful because he thinks the FBI is after him. Right. Um, at the age of 12, I was living next to the largest nuclear facility <laughs> in North America. <laughs> what? Did you go I swimming in the water like I did? Yeah. <laughs> the, the three-eyed fish. 
Uh, I watched everybody die of cancer. I couldn't understand why we could split an atom with sound and cause a nuclear explosion. If you look at an atom, there's lots of space, right? Electron, proton, neutron, whatever. There's a lot of space, space, it's empty space, right? 99% (laughs) is space. But it's oscillating at a frequency that appears to be real in our reality. Does that make sense? No. No, King, it doesn't. (laughs) Traditional isn't traditional. It's allopathic. And allopathic, it means alternative medicine. Look it up. It's all a measurement of the electromagnetic spectrum frequency. I break down stuff so you can all heal you. I don't heal anybody. I remove blocks, discord, and information. And then he says, you Uh know, he says, cancer is in every one of us right now. You want to know why cancer come in? comes in because it's protecting you of an infection your immune system did not respond to and you would have died in 12 hours. Huh? (laughs) What? (laughs) So he runs and I mean, this is a tangent. I wasn't planning on going on, but here we are. So he runs and founds a cancer healing center called Q360 Club in Malibu. It's a state of the art healing center designed to foster optimal health and mind full body scans and analysis. The Q stands for quantum energy field. Oh, okay. He uses vi- uh, frequency generating devices to Ooh. vibrate the cancer out of you. <laughs> no. So, no, no, no. I mean, there's charlatans like him who like, yeah. this is what Belle is alleging happened to her. That yeah. like one of these guys was like, you have cancer, I can fix it. So she claims in her book that she undertook chemotherapy and radi- uh, radiotherapy for two months. She got pregnant with her son and was like, I don't want to do uh, normal therapy. I want to do holistic medicine. Right. But then everyone was like, y- you didn't go to a doctor. There's no proof of this. So what actually happened um, and she says, oh, well, I, the pills that Mark Johns was giving me and the, and the supplements and things like that, like, I thought that was chemotherapy and like her story keeps changing. Oh. <laughs> so then everyone's like, if you thought you had cancer, why didn't you go to the doctor ever to get yeah. a real doctor to get a brain scan yeah. or like verify that you had cancer? And she was like, well, I just believed it. Like if someone tells you, you have, you know, I thought he was a doctor. So I just, if someone like, tells you you him. have cancer, you believe them. You believe it. Yeah. <laughs> so then later she changes her story and she says that in 2010, she did go to get a brain scan. And she says that Mark John slash Dr. Phil had, a. Uh, received the uh, the results of the MRI firsthand that she never received the results and that Mark Johns showed her different MRI results that actually had a brain tumor. So okay. she believed that she had brain cancer. So that like he duped her by showing okay. her fake results. The truth is this. The truth is that she did go in to get an MRI in 2010. She had a 45 minute consultation with a doctor she never mentioned to that doctor that she thought she had brain cancer, or that she to- was told that she had brain cancer or that she was receiving holistic treatment for brain cancer. Right. The reason she went into this doctor was because she was getting a checkup uh, to see whether or not she had multiple scler- sclerosis since it ran in her family. But it didn't actually run in her family. No, her mom does have MS, I guess. Oh, oh, okay, okay. But she never had to take care of. She didn't have to take care right. of her. Oh, mom. she didn't take like, care her of her. Like her mom was, okay. yeah, her mom was fine. Um, her mom had MS, but it was not like severe at the time or anything. Right. She and she got a brain scan and she was fine. She did not have MS and she certainly did not have cancer. And she never mentioned cancer to the doctor. So then she releases a statement saying that the cancer has spread to her blood, brain, spleen, uterus, and liver. She's riddled with cancer. Yeah, she it's everywhere. So this is in 2014. And this is like the craziest thing I've ever heard. 
So it's her son's fourth birthday party. Is her her son is four, so that makes her 19, 19, 20, 22. Yeah, real age, twenty two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Belle fakes a forty minute seizure <gasps> at her son's fourth birthday party. No. Yes, and no. I'll, I'll explain it. I'll explain in a second why she does that. No. So, and it's it's right as the party's wrapping up. Belle slides down a wall and starts having what she says is a really no. intense seizure while everyone around her is screaming and crying. And then as soon as someone picks up the phone to call an ambulance, Belle wakes up from her <laughs> seizure and says, don't I'm call okay. 911. Yeah, she, don't call 911. You guys, it's fine. Don't call 911. Whatever you do, don't call 911. I don't want the police here. Then when everyone knows not to call 911, she slips back into her seizure. <laughs> what um, is she doing? Yes. And uh, she releases the statement, you know, then that she, with frustration and ache in my heart, it hurts me to find space to tell you tonight with all the love and strength that I've been diagnosed with third and fourth cancer. Third and fourth and she cancer. Po- <laughs> yeah, which is how you phrase it. Um, and then she would post sometimes like on her Facebook and she'd be like, oh, I've been at the doctor all day. It was Ugh. very painful and stressful and long, but it turned out she was just getting her veneers done. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this fucking bitch. Let's take a quick break for announcements. Webcrawlers has a Patreon to get access to bonus episodes, shout outs, merch discounts. Please go to patreon.com slash webcrawlers. You can donate as little as $2 a month to become one of our bimbo patrons. And newsflash, I will be recording a Patreon video today. Or maybe Ooh. Melissa and I will be, depending on time. Yes. Please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. If you give us a five-star review, we will shout you out. Also, Erios has a hotline. Insert jingle here. 626-604-6262. Erios. It's really been popping off. Today, we are doing a um, mailbag episode, finally. Oh, yeah. Yeah, finally. Yes. See what kind of finally. deranged voicemails we have from like September. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear what you guys have had to say. So uh, please call us and we will begin our mailbag episodes again. Now on to our program. Here's why. Here's like the genesis of how she got popular and why she faked that seizure and stuff. The wellness industry is a three plus trillion dollar industry. Crazy. And it's always been popular. But if you think once social media started, Mm -hmm. um, it was a whole new way to promote, spread information or rather spread disinformation. So how can you make money and stand out within a space that's already incredibly popular. And it's by having to relate to your audience in a specific and different way and have like a really intimate relationship with them. So in 2013, when she alleges, you know, that she has her cancer and things like that, she starts her for her Instagram called Healing Bell. And She says, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer. I tried chemotherapy and radiation. I've decided to go a holistic route, and now I don't have cancer anymore. And everyone's, like, amazed. She says that she used diet, Ayurvedic treatments, IV therapy, yoga, and holistic medicine. Yoga is to demonic. Cure herself of cancer. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot. Yoga is the devil's work. So she. <laughs> what's confusing though is that like she says her, she cured her cancer, but then like a year later it has spread to her blood. So spleen, you didn't uterus. cure your cancer, right? So like none of this really makes sense to me. No. By the way, I want to say like. 
Ayurvedic medicine, having a good diet, like holistic medicine, none of that is bad on its own. Right. Like it's fantastic to eat healthy and like heal your body. And I totally believe all that stuff has benefits. Like sure, eating gluten-free or like cutting down dairy, cutting down sugar, like does in fact like decrease the inflammation yeah, in your it body. Really does. You know, I I I believe all of that is true. However, it does not cure cancer. No. <laughs> you know, like it it will not there's a th- there's a line, you know, especially if you don't have cancer to begin with. So her Instagram starts gaining a lot of followers and she's like I should make an app cuz I need to monetize this. Because in 2013, this is like the genesis of, you know, like Instagram. I don't think that they are really doing like sponsored posts and things like that. No, yet. This not is kind yet. Of, this was like the gaining followers portion, yeah. um, like having notoriety. She meets this guy named Alex, who's a programmer, and they create the world's first lifestyle app. Mm. And it's called The Whole Pantry. And it gives like diet suggestions, workout tips, meal planners, information on like Ayurvedic medicine and like all sorts of stuff like that. In its first month, it was downloaded 200,000 times. Wow. Making her almost $750,000. Damn. Yeah. And in 2013, it got the Best Food and Drink App Award by Apple. Nice. And it's the first lifestyle app. Belle is huge on Instagram. She has this um, amazing story. So Apple really honed in on her. And they invite her to work on a secret project with him. With them. This secret project turned out to be the fucking Apple Watch. Whoa. Yeah, Bell's whole pantry app was going to be one of the only apps that were pre-programmed onto the Apple Watch. That's great. That's like so, the U2 album that got downloaded onto your yes. phones. <laughs> oh my God, I was just about to say that. So it's like, you know how your phone comes like with annoying shit, you know, like stocks and like you can't get it out. I mean, like I'm sure a lot of people like stocks, but like it comes with stuff yeah, that you I that tell. just comes pre-programmed on the phone. Yes. So her app was going to be just one of those things that everyone had That's on the crazy. phone. That's crazy. Yeah, so they're probably going to pay her a huge amount of money. Yeah. Here's a here's one thing that I'm I'm Okay, <laughs> I'll say allegedly cuz I don't want to be sued. This is a big allegedly. <laughs> I'm actually not even going to say the sentence that I think you put it together yourself. Steve Jobs loved Bell and they were working very closely together. When Steve Jobs was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, he delayed conventional treatment for nine months. Really? Because he favored holistic treatment over conventional treatment. Uh-huh. He later said, obviously, that he regretted that. Oh, he did? Yes. Whoa. But I'm just wondering who he got that idea from. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying he was working closely with Bell. Just saying... Maybe I'm just putting that out there. I'm just putting that you out do the 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 You do you the math. You do the math. <laughs> um, Penguin also published a book of the same name. Right. This killed me. <laughs> I think this is so funny. So there is a there is this woman named, uh, I might pronounce her last name wrong, Jessica Ainscoff. And she was another woman who actually had cancer. And... She attempted to cure herself through holistic means, something called Gerson therapy. And I Googled Gerson therapy, and basically you just drink juice all day long and give yourself coffee enemas. What? And it sounds horrible. Um, oh. And she she had soft tissue cancer. Her brand was called The Wellness Warrior. The juice and coffee enemas did not cure her. No. And she passed away at the age of 30. And Belle crashed her funeral. What? So they Yes. They had only met once. And after they met, Jessica said something was quote unquote off about Belle. 
Sure. <laughs> Belle crashed. Yeah. Belle crashed her wake and funeral and apparently made a huge scene. What? She turned up to the private wake and cried hysterically and then asked Jessica's fiance for a private chat and cried hysterically on him. What? She cried the loudest the whole day. One uh, attendee said it was like she was making a point of being seen and heard. What? Why would you do that? It was probably to like gain more followers to be like, oh, I'm going through the same thing. Like I might end up like this. Like Uh, if you guys like Jessica, you'd probably like me too. And she probably was trying to steal her husband also. Like (laughs) this woman's nuts. That's crazy. She also befriended the family of someone who's child had cancer brain cancer Ugh. and the family says that the only reason that they think bell reached out to the family was so that bell could find out about what um brain cancer <gasps> felt like oh and no. like the symptoms so that she could like echo them and say she was going through the same thing Ooh. and bell's like i've never talked to these people and these people are like we have the receipts like they she would come over and like cry with us and then like ask like how the, our boy was feeling oh, so god in 2015 everything comes crashing down while bell is making money from her book and her app she's claiming that she is going to make charitable donations to different cancer therapies of up to three hundred thousand dollars and consumer affairs is like We're just going to look into it. You know, if someone says they're going to donate all this money, like we should look into it. All the donation claims were fake. She had not donated anything. And when she's tipped off that articles about this are going to be coming out and that consumer affairs are going to look into her, she donates $10,000, which is not the same as $300,000. No. So... In March 2017, she's found guilty of five breaches of consumer law. And this is the craziest thing. She did not appear in court for her sentencing, but wrote this email. Thank you for the update. Confirming receipt of the email. (laughs) Thank you for the update? Yeah. Like, thank you for the update that I've been sentenced. I I got the memo. Wow. (laughs) Like, she's crazy. She was sentenced to pay $400,000, but she has not paid anything. No. Um, no one has been ma- paid a cent. She's claiming that she's living off Centrelink, which I believe is like Australian welfare. She claims on her taxes that she has made 15000 one year and 20000 the next year. So she says like she's not making any money anymore. However, she, financial was, reports was on the Apple Watch. Of right. course she's making money. I, I should say now that um, the app, her website, the book, the book is still being sold on Amazon, but the app and the website are all defunct now. Oh, Apple right. cut ties with her and and um, her website is, no, I went to her website this morning. It's no longer hmm. in, you know, and Apple has... Apple was reached for comment and they no comment. They did not say anything wow. about her. And uh, they also reached out to Penguin Random House being like, how did you just like let this woman yeah. claim these stories and you didn't do any background on her? And they were like, I don't Oops. know. You just believe someone <laughs> when they say this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Financial reports show that she's actually spent ninety thousand dollars, forty five thousand on discretionary funds, and thirteen thousand on clothing and makeup. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> so she has money. She's getting it from somewhere, yeah. but she's just not paying. Today, she um, has joined the Ethiopian community. So okay, what? <laughs> she has what? changed her name to Sobantu. <laughs> Sobantu. Sobantu. And she has joined the Oromo community. In so she Ethiopia. lives in Ethiopia. A, a statement from someone in that community was like, no, we don't claim her. Like, we, we don't, don't want her. anything to do with her. Yeah, we don't. Um the Oromo are the largest ethnic group in the East African nation of Ethiopia, and a large uh, diaspora lives in Victoria. 
So I guess Victoria is a place in Australia. Australia, So maybe she lives in Victoria. But, oh, Mel- Melbourne's a Romo community. So I guess she Melbourne. is with the community in, Mel- in Melbourne. Melbourne. Um, so she is uh, claiming that she has joined that community. She says, I became deeply invested in the community because I saw the character and the values of your people. I feel completely adopted by your nation and your people. Uh, they think that now she is a follower of Islam. I feel like my heart is as invested as yours and your family's. Your struggle is my struggle, Ugh. et cetera. She's wearing um, traditional Ethiopian garb oh, now. No. So that's what she's doing now. There is one funny and also, there is another article about her scamming. It's a this is from the Daily Mail. Bizarre twist in Belle Gibson saga as notorious cancer faker is embroiled in a drug bust case under guise Ooh. of Muslim legal advisor after the con woman converted to Islam. What? So it says <laughs> apparently uh, she approached. There's some husband who was a. a a drug kingpin and she bell gibson approached his wife at the mosque and was like i can help you i can be your advisor in this situation to help you like get away from him or whatever um let me help you in this court ma- in this court case and then also i can move in with you <laughs> and like all this stuff. <laughs> no yeah uh she's like pretending to be a lawyer now and and she's a part of the ethiopian community yeah so i mean this woman is not she's not done yet i don't think she's ever going to be done what's her her son like what's where's he i don't know i couldn't i couldn't find out a lot about i mean her son must be with the dad because i can't find there's no pictures of the son with her like she must get like she must see him once a year or something weird that's crazy. I mean, I hope the son's not with him, her. Um, wow. But what scares me the most about her is how often she changes her entire personality. Yeah. Like, I don't know what that is, but like, it That's honestly strange. is like talented Mr. Ripley shit. Like, she just takes on a whole new pa- personality when things aren't working out for her. So, yeah. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> She's a scary lady, and what's even scarier is that there's a lot more uh, like her out there um, that we'll be getting into, you know, for the rest of the month, which is like maybe next week. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, Anyways, if you know uh, anyone else like Belle Gibson, if you know, uh, have any comments on this episode, if you have any more information on her, Melissa, where can people reach us? You can email us at webcrawlerspod at gmail.com. All right. Well, I am Allie Coffee Enema Siegel. I am Melissa. Drink juice all day long and shit your pants, Stetton. (laughs) My favorite activity. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Original. Powered by ACAST.